but they haven't come back. Branding, mortgage uh, foreclosure notices were basically rejected and they didn't proceed, and they haven't come back to demand as of yet. Right. So, and 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 the method that I thought was pretty simple and pretty ingenious is basically tendering um, a let's say a bond or some form of payment that you classify as legal tender, and you send it to your notary, and you ask the notary to act as an escrow agent, send notice to the bank, and stating, so you're basically, you're agreeing, and you're always showing good faith. You're, mm-hmm. I agree to pay you upon presentment of a the bona fide promissory note, which is the basis of your claim, because if if I lend you, Ron, if I lend you $1,000 and your proof of that is a promissory note IOU that we signed, if I pay you, I'm going to want that back. Right. Unless, you know, you pass it on to somebody else and they appear in the future and say, hey, I got this note, you owe me. So we, we send, let's say, the um, draft or notice of legal tender and it's being held and verified with the third-party notary witness acting as an escrow agent, send notice to the bank and said, you have legal tender waiting for you here for 30 days upon presentation of my original wedding signature back. Right. You know, um, that has been fried down here, and, and and the problem with it is you've created a a bond or whatever <clears throat> mm-hmm. and the, and they don't recognize those things well that's the beauty of it Ron they will only see what is being held at, with the notary and the escrow agent if they present the promissory note which they never do because they've sold it already which right. is already you know breach yeah, of service pooling agreement and you also do what's called um, to protect your notary a notice of tender with the notary, and they have 72 hours to rebut that, you know, a you know fraudulent instrument or whatever it is. Right. So basically, the notary is going to attest that, hey, it looked good to me. I couldn't find any de- defects in it. Um, but, however, they will only get to that point if they produce the, and the notary is a witness to it, if they produce, timely produce the promissory note. And then also in the instruction is going to be that the notary has been instructed to return within 30 days, the legal tender, and that's all that you call it. You don't say, I have a bonded right. promissory note, I have this, I have that. Um, well, because, like, as you mentioned, it could get to that. Because any tender or any um, any payment refused in law, now I don't owe you anymore. Well, and, and yeah, we have tried that five, six years ago, and that didn't work either. They, they, they have ways around all of this stuff now. They know every angle we're coming from. Now, I personally, I would not put a notary into that position because they're they're starting to hunt the notaries down. Uh, yeah. Down here, anyway. Hmm? They're putting them in jail. Wow. Well, I use the notary actually in the U.S. because in Canada it's hard to find a right. notary witness. They right. can only uh, basically attest to your signature. They yep. won't do presentments on your behalf. Right, right. I, I've yet to find one. So I actually use one in the U.S. Okay, so far, well... That's, that's I don't, I don't know. If I'm asking your opinion, I don't know how effective it will be down the line. It's just well, if, like... if you had a, a real, honestly, a real legal tender instrument, it would work. But then what's the point? You might as well just pay the loan off, you know? Well, the point but... is, is that it will prove that they basically have sold your note already and, and, ma- and made the money on it. I know. Trying to double dip. I know. I, actually, they've made 20 times. They've secured exactly. at least 20 times. Exactly. And really, my note already paid off. That's right. Mortgage. That's right. So. And, and down here, what they're doing now is they're having these um, investigative services go back and find all the securitizations that were done on all the notes. Hmm? Yeah, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Now, do you believe that they're getting around many of these things by – basically because it's a trust and we unknowingly basically entered into a trust agreement, you know, in the mortgage? Uh, no, they're trust. getting around it because of pure fraud. Yeah. Pure fraud. Well, up here they just do what they want. 
That's right. They do what they want down here. So it's really? best to go for the stalemate, you know, for now. Well, see, mine worked for about a year, and it was a business loan. Mm-hmm. Actually, a year and a half, they went away, even after foreclosure notice. But about a year and a half later, they they've come. They came back in January yep. with a lawsuit um, alleging fraud. Right. Prior to giving the note. No, no mention of the payment or of the promissory note and all of that, and that they defaulted on that. I guess they, that's what was basically tipping me off. I'm saying, then why haven't they come and said I didn't pay? No, they went on a. They came back on a different angle and said, prior to giving the loan, if there certain things were fraudulent in our claims, and they wouldn't have never given the loan if we didn't, you know, they didn't commit fraud. Yep, yep. But I just made them go away because I didn't acknowledge the lawyers. So up to now, they have not come back. Oh, well, that's a good move, too. Anyways, Roberto, we got to move on. Okay. Thank you for your time, Ron. Thank you for uh, calling in. Okay. Thank you. Talk Thank to you. Care about yeah. um, Thank Terry, I'm just going to give a quick outline of what I've discovered in, in my IRS pursuits, and then Greg can have the floor. Okay? Okay. okay. Let's, let's go for that, and uh, the floor is yours, and everyone else will be muted. <laughs> Um, I'm glad everybody is still with me because um, <clears throat> my my real specialty is researching IRS. That's because I have been in battle with those folks for 15 years. And I think I have finally found what appears to be the correct and legal answer to most of our IRS problems. And... <clears throat> The, the, the man that actually kind of threw the idea out was um, Gene Keating. I, I picked it up in a transcript that he had with, uh, I think it was Ralph Winterud back in December. Well, a friend of mine tried it uh, early January of this year, and he had immediate success. So <clears throat> last year... In July, uh, my property was stolen by the IRS, evicted out of our home, and then I was put in jail. How about that? All in one day, by the way. That's quite a shock. So <clears throat> the the key to this thing is the misinterpretation of the rules, okay? And... What we discovered was inside uh, the IRS manual 6209, it talks about how to decode all of these different numbers and what they mean on your uh, individual master file. But it's very telling in that it explains, not in great detail, but it explains what all the letters mean and what a W-2 form is and what a W-4 is and how and what tax class it's connected to. The key to this thing is uh, tax class. So, for example, <clears throat> you take a W-2, and a W-2 is the reporting form that an employer will issue and give you a copy, and the copy goes to the IRS, of your wages. <clears throat> now, a W-2 is considered a tax class 5 gift. Remember that, tax class 5. A W-4, which is the employee's certificate of voluntary withholding, is considered a tax class 5 document. Now, so you filled out a W-4, it's a tax class 5, you receive the W-2, which is a tax class 5, reporting of a gift. So now you need to report that information on the proper form. A 1040 is not the proper form. A 1040 is considered a reporting form for tax class 2. And a tax class 2, they call it, individual income tax, fiduciary income tax, and partnership returns. That's all corporate stuff. 
has nothing to do with wages, except that they tinkered with the form to induce us to use the wrong form by attaching a W-2 to it, because it says so right on the front of the form. Anyway, the proper form is a form 709, and this, by the way, this is all in all in the document. I'm reading right out of their document. Uh, a 709 is a United States gift tax return, and it is a tax class 5 form. I did this myself back in February, middle of February, and they have not answered. Well, I wonder why. <laughs> they just stole everything I had. Are they going to go back and fix it? I don't know. But I am right now preparing a complaint claim with the United States Federal Court of Claims, the only place a citizen can bring in an action for a redress of grievance against the United States. <clears throat> so I'm preparing that right now, and I am using this information about the 709 as my defense. So... Um, in a couple of weeks, I think what I'll do is I'll put together a whole package on this and explain how to fill the forms out. You can figure it out eventually, but it's easier if I kind of show you how to do it. It's real easy then. But uh, you can go back and and uh, change all your 1040s because they lied to you. It was, it was misdirection. So anyway, um, I won't take questions on this because... Um, I have Greg Pappas waiting in line, and he would l love to get on the phone and talk to you about some stuff he has discovered. So I'm going to pass it over to Greg. Terry? Yes. Greg, are you there? I'm here, Terry. You're on. Oh, good. Hi. Thank you. Hey, Greg. Well, well I, I, I want to – Ronnie's still there? Yeah, I am. Well, good, because I want to say something here. I'd like to stay on for a little bit. Um what, I, what I'm seeing here and what Frank has done uh, with all of us since before November, but I only, you know, Ron told me about Frank in the middle of November, and and uh, I mean, we've been on ever since. And um, the thing I, I found with what Frank has done, he's found the core of the onion to everything. And, and, we, and the irony about this whole thing is when one part of their system starts to be exposed and revealed to begin a collapse, the whole... Every, every little detail about everything else is coming out at the same time. It's like when I was studying the, the secrets behind secret societies and what it was that they knew, and I knew throughout my lifetime that there was a connection between every part of our lives. I knew there was a, a connection with um, what they taught at school, with the media, uh, the propaganda they put out about wars, uh, the, the issues regarding each religion. I mean, I would – and, and um, one of the things that I want to bring out here is that, that – Ron, um, I've known Ron now for, what, 11 years, Ron, something like that? Yep. And uh, we were studying with a man uh, at the time who was the, considered the old guru in the American legal process. The old expert was Roger Elvick. And um, Elvick had come up with all kinds of ideas, and he said all kinds of strange things that didn't make sense. But because he thought outside the box, it took me – you know, down these different trails to do some investigation on what things meant. And in the process, um, discovered that everything had been controlled and everything, including the scriptures, as we've been told. And I think one of the reasons that people have had a problem really digesting the genius of what Frank has been presenting has been the fact that we were all so conditioned in our various compartmentalizations of insanity, uh, especially in the religious area, that we couldn't see that one group was giving off one doctrine, another group was giving off another doctrine, and they were all lying. Every single one of them was a direct lie. To, In fact, they could splinter this thing off into a myriad of ways, and each time they'd splinter it off, we'd get fractionalized even more, and then the division between all of us would become more and more pronounced. What Frank has done, and I heard this in the very first recording I heard, I think was on the Divine Mind Group call, the 7th of November, I think at the 14th, before I got on the live call, and um, was this incredible uh, uh, compassion and genuineness of Frank. Um, and, and it was this, is that most everybody I've ever been around that had knowledge of something, if they knew a point, 
their ego was wrapped up inside of what they knew. And in Frank's case, 